Yeah, well, here I am, and uh, yeah, welcome back. Welcome back to the grind. It's uh, on the porch this week again. There's, I've been doing other stuff too, but for the most part, it's been on the porch. The um, welder, I had it out. I needed to do some welding on the porch, which you'll see if you hang around. And then I had to change it back to the uh, welding on the on the blueberry wagon. Which I might do to them tomorrow, how that? Anyway, so this week the goal was to, uh, well, interior's in it, you know that. A couple other little finishing touches in there. And the, this week the goal was to take the fuel distributor apart and put a new coil in it. I think that was happening before. And then uh, put an electronic ignition module into here. So that's, yay, it's all done. And there's, uh, it seems to be, it's running. Now I'm going to get after, for, for next week, I'll get after checking the fuel pressure and all that kind of stuff. Because I've got this module here, I think I've got it right inside. And, and anyway, well, uh, but I think I've got the fuel pressure wrong. And, and then I have to, and then meantime, and I'll also pull the, Pull the uh, injectors, check them to make sure that they're uh, just, you know, like the right amount of fuel is coming out. And I'm going to also take number one spark plug out of there and, and determine exactly where top dead center is, uh, just so I have my own, so I know for sure where it is. Okay, that's for next week. For this week, it's uh, all about the fuel thing and all about the distributor so please enjoy it and i'll see you next time yeah yeah so welcome back to welcome back to the grind another lovely day outside hmm let's uh, just take a look here starting a new week on the now a minute ago it was raining and pouring out here and now it's sort of stopped just like that how fast it happened anyway the uh on the porsche 924 one of the things on my list is to make these things work right i don't know what's going on with them i might have to just take that apart in here and uh sort that sort that out a bit because they don't as soon as you drive and they come up it all comes up by itself it was i thought it was great that i put on the the new uh, things but the old ones kept the roof down anyhow now over here I've been on this for a little while now and this was a bit bulged out and I I couldn't find a way to get any purchase to bang on it so I drilled these three holes through here and then pulled it back in and it seems to be pushing it back that way and I think I've gone as far as I want to go with that that on this side here it's I don't want to be start pulling in on this likely I'll just leave all those bolts in there I'll just cut the ends off and leave them in there and uh, that, that'll be fine they don't have to go anywhere on this side here I'll seal them up with uh, you know tar stuff so that they stay sealed this one here now I'll cut I'll clean the galvanized off of this and see if I can get it to weld up for me just to make it so that it's a solid, a solid fix. Like it's not, it's definitely not concourse finish, but it's better than it was before anyhow. And it seems to be back into its native shape there, more or less. I don't think it affects anything as far as the car really goes. The, um, this thing here got banged and I, I don't know that I guess I could, uh, hmm, like the camber is off a little bit. If, if I wanted to, I could elongate these holes a bit and just move that over a little bit so that the camber would move over that way a little bit from the top. But I'm not too awful worried about it because it's pretty close to being within tolerance. Well, it's, it's right at the edge of tolerance. So I'm, I'm right now, I'll check it after I do this because this might change it a little bit too. 
Anyhow, so I'll clean off all, that's all galvanized steel, so I have to clean off all that galvanized before I weld it. And then I'll uh, get at it. Yeah, there it is. Now, this, the only part that is still a little bit wonky is right here. Otherwise, it looks like it's all back to, uh, close to normal. Like there's not, there's a bit of a bulge back here that likely wasn't there at the factory, but it's not too bad. And this might be pressed in a little bit instead of being, there, there's supposed to be a little bit of a bulge on it. So what I'll do is I'll, I think I'll just cut those off right here while I have the uh, cutting tool out and then just leave them there and that'll be fine. Yeah, I can't reach the bottom one with my cutting tool, so I'll think about how to get that cut off there without wrecking anything. The important thing is not to wreck anything. This thing here, I don't want to wreck that either because that's, that's the cable that opens the uh, hood up. So I don't want to wreck that. Not immediately, anyhow. And uh, so I think I'm safe to go ahead and weld this now. It looks all right to me. And that should that should actually be all right once it's welded. It'd be solid anyhow. Like right now you could, you can, well, I, I could show you if I had a screwdriver. Hang on. Yeah, so right now you can take and you can see that little bit of movement in there if I uh, hit it with a screwdriver. But before I put those bolts in there, there was a lot of movement, so. The bolts have even helped it out a little bit, so that'll that'll help things out, I'm sure. Okay, I'll get. I have to go to the other other shop and get my welder over here. It's in the other shop. Yeah, yeah. The, there are the welders back in here, and they uh, what did it? It had the wrong wire in it. Had the wire in it that I use for uh, welding on the truck out there with the heavy heavy wire. So I put 0.6 wire back into it for this. And then uh, this is a like the, what they call a smart welder, and it knows what size wire you have, and you just set the size of steel you're working on. So this is like 22 gauge or 20 gauge steel. So I'll go fairly light on it, I think, to start with. I'll just put it down to 22 gauge, see how that holds, and just tack it a few times across there and see what see what it looks like. Yeah, there that's welded together. And when I put a screwdriver in here, nothing moves anymore. So I think that that'll be okay. I did, I poked a hole right through here. There was a, actually, there was a hole right through there to start with. I don't know what it was from, maybe from this rubbing, eh? And so I poked it from the other side and then welded it on both sides just to make it okay. And the rest of it seems to be, you know, it's not certainly not concourse finish but it's certainly not too bad so I'll be happy with that and I'll take some of that I think I have some goop goopy stuff that I'll just spray on those bolts here from this side and that'll be uh, that'll cover them up okay alrighty yeah there you go you'd never know it was broken there eh? that's pretty good anyway that's that I'm happy with that. Yeah, so now I'll do something fairly, well, likely it isn't simple, but I'll take this apart and just see what it does, see what I have to do to make it so that the, that thing there holds in it better. Because I think it's just an adjustment thing. Anyway, I'll pull it apart and see. Yeah, so here's the assembly of it all. That's uh like that that little thing there turns and opens it this lights right in your eye right this goes over the whole thing like under hmm, let me get let me get you set up here <coughs> maybe light work in the right way there how's that down here somewhere yeah Is that where it is right there so this part here goes on like that, right? This part here goes over it, and that it's got a uh, catch basin on it for the water, somehow or other, like that, or like the other way. 
yeah, like that. So any water that comes through gets caught in that caught ba catch basin and goes down this tube here and outside the car down there. Another tube here. I wonder what that's for. Hmm. Maybe over there. I don't know. Anyhow. And then this. I don't know if you can see this. Can you see this right here? That's the uh, the thing that, you know, actually pulls. And it's just a snap on. Snaps on there. Pretty simple. So I think what's going on is that this is... Like when I release it, sometimes it goes back all the way and sometimes it doesn't. So I think it's just dirty in there. So I'm going to take off both of them and put them in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner and see if that'll clean them up a bit. This, the other thing, the banjo thing, whatever you want to call it, the air metering system, like that. See how that goes up and down? That's... When air gets sucked through, it pulls that up. That lets this thing drop uh, the center pin down so more fuel goes to the top. Now, I learned a bunch of stuff on this thing here just by reading. And when I took it apart, when you take it apart, you, gotta, you have to keep a uh, mind on where all the springs are, which spring goes where, because those springs might be just a little bit different in height and it's got to be each one of these things should be at at the same height the other thing is there's i'm missing the uh little uh, uh things in there for filter things that are going there they're just not not here hmm. i'll see if i can find some on the internet somewhere maybe they'll come along Now these springs here, they all should be at the same height, so I'll have to, I'll check them with my, uh, my chronometer as closely as I can. And you see there's lots of goop in here, I got too much goop on it last time, so that has to be addressed. Then these little seals here, they've got goop on them. And they just, I have to get a pair of needle nose pliers for them. Look at this pair. Right here.
Yeah, there we go. That's mostly all apart. Now this part here, I'm not sure what came in this uh, for new bits, but I'm going to... I'll take those seals out, but I'm not going to remove that thing there. I'm going to put that through the uh, ultrasonic the way it is, because it uh, real pain in the ass to get it on and off of there. Yeah, I decided to take it off anyway, even though it is a real pain in the ass to get it back on there. But I know there's a I know there's a pain in the ass coming up, right? And it's just these little spring clips here that are tough to get it onto it. Yeah, I'm giving those door things another go with the ultrasonic and uh, the back window things. Then I've got this all apart here, and that's about it for today. I'm going to leave that and do. I'll, I'll clean it up tomorrow and uh, see where it goes from there. Well, here I am two or three days later now. Hmm, what's going on? So, what I do, I got the... Uh, fixed up that, right? Then I've got all the uh, the fuel distributor taken apart over there. So I'm going to clean that out today. Now yesterday, day before yesterday, I was out cutting wood or whatever I was doing. Lumberjack, I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. And then yesterday I had the welder out and I was working on this. It was a nice day yesterday. The sun's coming out now, but it was raining and snowing earlier today. So best not to weld in the rain, right? Hmm. Anyway, I'll just work on the, uh, on the 924, which is fun. Okay, now, today I gotta measure these things up. I, I haven't changed them yet, or I haven't done anything there. I'm gonna measure them and just see if I can make it so that they're all equal. I'll just show you as I get that along. Here's the, uh, all the bits out of it. I'm going to put them in here and let them clean up a bit. But first I'll I'll check out my rebuild kit which is in a box somewhere here and I'll put some of these tools away that I was using for other stuff. Yeah, yeah, so just blind luck now. This, these are all the same, about the same height. within a, a nanometer anyhow so I don't know how they all go together whether that's you know whether they're all the same height to start with or what but I'm gonna just take them apart and I'm pretty sure I can get them back configured in there at the same height later so they're all like at what's that 5.5.58 millimeters 5.575 somewhere around there millimeters and that's don't know what they're supposed to be but that's what they are so and now I did when I, was, I had two hands out when I had it when I was measuring them up I had a level I had a level stuck next to this thing so that that this was level up and down and then I've also made sure it was level across this way you know more or less as close as I can get it so that all those measurements you know they'd be vertical to it and all that kind of stuff so now I'll take this apart and I'll put all these into the cleaning fluid so th those were at the right level I had too much yucko and goop on here that I'll have to clean off and I've learned from the uh, uh, what I watched on the internet how to you know just paint it on with a little brush eh? I have a little brush somewhere on this planet I think over there somewhere I'll find it we'll paint that on lightly and that should have make it better hey eh? yeah here's all this stuff ready to go into the into the thing here the fibrosonic anyhow but all the little small guys things are in here this shaft is here 
I didn't put that shaft into it. I'm going to just clean that off with mineral spirits. And this thing here, I'll just put in the vinegar for a little while. See how that, whoops, don't lose it. Okay, there we go. Here they come. Okay, stand by. Yeah, now here I am. I'm, I forgot to take out that bolt on the top there, or that plug on the top. Finally got that washer out of there. These things all came out pretty nice and clean. Those are my spacers in there, but I think the, the kit came with new spacers, I hope. And there's a little tiny pinhole up at the top of that. This thing here, like I tried, it's, I think this is completely blocked. It's, I can't seem to even blow, like I can't get any air to go through it. So, hmm, maybe I'll just leave it off for a while and, and, and get, uh, order a new filter there. Somehow I think it comes from somewhere. I'll order a new filter there and, and I'll run it without that for a little while and just see how, see how things go because I think that's causing a problem. Hmm. Yeah, so I got those things in there for a second time, soaking away. I don't know, maybe I'll just throw that in there too. It's not going to get it any worse, I don't think. Wait and see. Yeah, well that, putting it in the, uh, whatever you call it, the vibrator thing, that cleaned it. So it's nice now. And I can blow through it. I couldn't blow through it before, but I can blow through it now. So, we'll call that okay and put it with the okay pile which is over there now this stuff here I'll have to get the uh, this is that's uh, mineral spirits in there so I'll just see if I can clean this stuff up with mineral, mineral spirits yeah yeah maybe I'll put on some rubber gloves I don't know they'll have to get eaten up by the mineral spirits anyhow but I guess that wouldn't hurt Yeah, so you, you can see the little bits of uh, debris. There's one there. I can use the razor blade to get that off. Another one here. Oh, that one there is gone now. And right there, another one there. That'll be, clean them off a bit and see if I can get something in to clean the bottom of those holes in there off. And then I'll be happy with it. Yeah, I think I'm ready for reassembly here. So here's the new bits. There's a bag full of bits there right? comes with new screws for it to go into the body and all of these copper washers and I think there's a couple of fiber washers I'm not sure we'll wait and see what comes here and <coughs> it's got all these copper washers here plus this thing here carefully to put this in the right place so that it gets there should be a pinhole in this sucker somewhere I think uh, on that side there. No, there it is. A little tiny pinhole right there. So there's two holes here. Three, 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 and a pinhole. And that pinhole lines up with this thing right here. And that allows pressure to go top to bottom. I don't know what it does. Anyhow, that's the way it is. And the very top of that, the little pinhole in there, I'm pretty sure that, I don't know... I'm pretty sure it's clear. Uh, otherwise, and now I'll go ahead and I'll set up the springs and measure them to make sure they're the right height before I do anything else. Okay. Yeah, so these things here, now there's this little washer that goes on in there, perhaps. Use a pokey thing to get it down there. Then the next thing on is the spring, right? And then the next thing on is this thing here, and it's got like two choices. It's got kind of a beveled end in here, whoops, and a flat side on this side, so the flat side goes up. 
the beveled end so it'll go over the the bevel of that thing. Okay, I'll get those four things on, then we'll measure them up. Yeah, now, near as I can tell, they're all the same height. These ones, I interchanged this spring and this spring, and uh, then they all came around right. So, that's pretty good. A little bit of dirt right there. Everywhere you look, there's a tiny bit of dirt. Oh, well, we'll get it all out of there eventually before we put more dirt into it. Okay, now, next is... Uh, some of that, this stuff here, Loctite 542, but before that goes in, I'll get this part here set up. Wait till I just show you what I've done here. I've done a little bit. Always, I'm always ahead of you, hey? So this, that, that, uh, this thing here goes inside here. And it just needs a little bit of like uh, light oil, so I used like WD-40 to make it so it slides nice. But those, that's a machine fit, and it's uh, you don't want to dick with it. <laughs> don't scratch it, that's for sure. Okay, that's what I've done so far. So now I'm going to set this up. I'll put this stuff all aside. I'll set this thing up, but just give me a minute to get prepared. Yeah, I know, so this bit here is a pain, but it's got to be done. So that slides on one way or the other. You see there's a little bit of a burr in it right there. I'll try going this way. Yeah, there, that'll slide on right to, to there. Yeah, right away I guessed wrong. So here, here's the uh, instructions from the makers of the kit. So I need number one, which is all the stuff, all the seals of this thing here, which is number one, right? Need number two, which is the seals for the bottom of this thing here. Whoops. Down there. And maybe in there. And number five, which is the seals for this one right here, which I've already done once and taken apart again, right? Now, I found this, I had this on my computer in the house, so I got to put it on Google Drive, and don't you know, it's right out here. So you get German and loosen the montage screws, like I've got everything apart already, right? So I don't need to know how to take it apart. Yeah, so there it says, remove the spring, make sure that uh, they all are the same height, which I've already checked here. Washer spring and spring cup on adjustable fuel distributors. Anyhow, I'll bring you up to date as I get along. Yeah, now one thing I've read up above here that's important, these should be, like when you measure that distance right here, Should be between four and five millimeters, which is what I've got here, and they're all approximately the same. <clears throat> so those are all good. Four to five millimeters, it says in there. Now I'll carry on reading. <clears throat> Maybe a bit ahead of you, but now I've got this. Uh, what do you call that? The filter on there, O-ring there, O-ring there. And that there's a like a 
fiber washer that goes in here right in there and it kind of gets up tight against these o-rings so the easiest way is to uh, mount the o-ring on the little clippy thing then put the whole assembly back into here I don't know you can see this or not it's kind of difficult to see everything going on with my fingers in the way and so I just take the pliers and then you get this pushed down get the o-ring thing pushed down into the right spot there not quite see that that fiber washer is just coming up against it there. There. I think that'll push it down now. So that it's right in there. Now, last one. Hey, maybe you can get them all on here. This is about... Everything here is picky. Picky, picky, picky. Oh, that's recording. Hmm. How come? Oh well, that's all right. So now, this part here, there's a little indent in the housing here, and that indent points towards any, like any piston. This has to point there. That way, it makes it seal properly. Now I wonder if that all the way in. Well, feels like it. I thought that would go down a bit farther maybe, but hmm, maybe not. It'll likely get pushed in farther. So that's in. All the pieces are on there. And it comes up to the bottom of the O-rings there. It might have to go down a little bit farther, but oh, I can't turn that over because it's got those on there. So, install all the washers and I'll get back to you here now. Now there's an O-ring goes right in. I'll see if I can point this out. See where the tip of my pointy thing is in here? I don't know if you can see that. Maybe, maybe not. But the O-ring goes right there. Now there's two types. There's this thick one like that for some types. And there's a skinny one that goes in in this particular type. So that's in there. Then this O-ring here goes over here on there. To deal with later. Yeah, that this gets bolted to it. Okay, next is I want to clean the I put a bit of oil on there so I want to just clean that off a bit. So, after that I'll get back to your game. So you have to use this kind of a sealant. It says I got that somewhere. I don't know where. I don't remember where or when. But anyway. But last time I did it, I put it straight on there, and I got way too much. So they say just take a bunch. Whoops. Okay. Take some and put it onto uh, a sheet of paper, which they they happily supply that piece of paper, and a uh, brush, or in this case, a Q-tip, and just. Lay it on here gingerly. Try not to get it into any of the uh, important bits, right?
Yeah, so envelope number five has the proper rubber o-ring for this and it goes I'll show you I just put a bit of oil on it where does it go it goes in this hole here like that then this spring goes in there like that and then oops, it's got a new copper washer for that right there and it's got two new uh, shims right I'm just gonna put them in there so I don't lose them and then we'll adjust the fuel pressure later on the car Like it might need more shims, it might need less shims. I've got my handmade shims here that worked all right also. You've got a metric adjustable, right? That's back together. Now we'll just hope that it all works okay. Uh, let me see what time is it 4 53 about five o'clock so it's pretty near quitting time and uh, the other thing I was doing today was working on the, the rear hatch thing in between times I'd work on the rear hatch thing here so I'm just gonna I'll do a little bit more on this and see if I can get it adjusted so that the hatch opens and closes properly this side this side came off this is the driver's side one it came off okay but the other side, one of the screws is seized in, so it's not going to come off. And I'll just adjust it on si in sight there. See how things work out. There now, uh, let's see what we got going on here. So this side here is able to get out and adjusted it. But it like, it's a funny thing. Hard to, that's in tight against it, but it's like that loose in the rubber there hmm don't know what to do about that but it seems to be working okay now I'll just show you from inside here maybe here it comes down right and then up and down and it doesn't Just about had you stuck in there for a while. It was coming loose when I was uh, driving. So it needs a bigger rubber here. This rubber here needs to be replaced, which, like, it's just falling apart. I think this is the Princess Auto all rubber. Anyhow, we'll figure that out and we'll get a new rubber on it and uh, go from there. So it seems to be working more or less, we'll say. They, these were adjusted, they're adjusted better now. That one there, I couldn't adjust the height on it, but it seems to be pretty tight, the whole thing. This one here is loose anyhow, so maybe I need a new one of them. Hmm, we'll just check into it. Like, I'm, I'm scared to use force on this because I'll break the window, eh? And we don't know, we don't want to break the window, that's for sure. Okay, anyhow, there we go. Yeah, there now, that's all all for today we'll uh, clean up this part here tomorrow and it's fairly well that's all there is to it is just that simple device we'll clean that up tomorrow and get it back into the car <coughs> excuse me and we'll see about getting the car started because I also have an electronic ignition so I want to hmm, I put a new coil in it so I want to start the car before I do anything else on it. Isn't that the weirdest thing you ever did see right there? What the hell is that? 
Who knows, eh? What a weird, weird thing. Anyway, I wanted, maybe that's for topping up the water or letting the pressure out. I don't know. That's something odd. Anyhow, the, um, I want to get the car to start with this fuel configuration the way it is. Then, as long as it starts, then we know it runs. Then I'll change it to electronic ignition, try and start it again, and then we'll start doing the tune-up on it, like fuel pressure testing and stuff like that. Okay, that's all I have for now. See you later. Oh yeah, there, here I am, <laughs> back again for another day. Anyway, today I'm going to, I've cleaned up this thing here, so it looks fairly decent, and I did not take this part off it. There's a gasket up underneath there that I don't want to disturb if I don't have to. This, uh, I took off the bracket for holding this on, and maybe I'll clean up in underneath there a bit before carry on and I just you know gave it a quick a three dollar overcoat here well they missed a bit here and there I'll do that and then uh, this is the bracket that holds it at the top so let's let that dry away anyway I'll just touch up the bits that I missed here sorry hmm there we go there we are Anyhow, that'll be, that'll look decent when it's in there. The uh, rubber things, I've got three of these, but I have to order a couple more because these ones that are underneath the, uh, underneath here, they're on, so, sort of on their last legs, but they'll, they'll do for a while more before, until they get new ones and they're easy to get into and replace. It's no, no trouble to replace them. So next I'll see if I can clean up around here a bit and get a bit of a bracket for that fuel filter so it's not rattling around in there by itself. So that's what I'm thinking about here. Yeah, yeah, so I'm uh, somewhere ahead of you, right? This is the uh, cable that opens the hood latch. That's pretty rattly in there, but I'll put it back together. And I routed it, it routes underneath the air filter here but above, I'm going to put it above here because it was push, pulling too hard and scraping on itself. Everything, everything scraped off. So I'll put it above there. Whoops. Don't be losing the bits. Then uh, I'll put this pit, bit here back on, but I'll put the cable in first because it's easier to access right now. And then when I put on, I'm ready to put on the... Uh, air breather so I'll take that hose off of there and I'll put the air breather everything all together on it and then get it mounted in there because this one clap clippery clippy thing down in here is impossible to get my big hands down in there so anyhow that's what I'll do this wire in here sort of just let it it's kind of all over the place eh? I don't know where it should be, but it certainly is all over the place. That's the wiring for the, uh, whatever you call that stuff. The, that's the wiring for the mm, air conditioner. Maybe I'll just take a tie wrap and put it on there. All I did was put a tie wrap on this air conditioner pipe here, and, and then I'll see about this after I get it all, everything on there. Anyway, there we go. Oops, there I am. So now I've loosened those two bolts so that it'll sit free, kind of. And then I've got those ones started. This is all down in there, and the bottom clasp is clasped. But you see that way down there, like way down there, right about at the end of this thing, I was able to take a long nose pliers and get, I don't know if you can see that, yeah, able to take a long nose pliers and get the uh, nut on there, right? Or the washer on there. So my nephew, Sam, he showed me this trick one time. You take, when you want to get something into there, just take a piece of paper towel and then put it over the uh, socket and then put your nut in there and it holds it. It won't go anywhere. And then you can get it to screw on for you, maybe. Wait a minute, I'll show you. Yeah, where am I looking? Down around here somewhere. You can't really see anything, but here it is. 
like, and then just reach way down there with this thing and there you go. And that's on there. How do you like that, eh? Thanks, Sam. That works good. There now. Now my little piece of paper towel is gone. Oh, it's down there somewhere, maybe. But it'll go away eventually. Okay, there you go. Yeah, so there now I've... Uh pulled pulled this hose here off of here but then when I lifted it over here don't you know this was down and, and it started leaking because this was higher than that and you know not leaking but pouring and where's all that water coming from so or all that antifreeze coming from so anyhow now that I've got it it's kind of clean in here I can have a look around a bit this is like all those those pipes there look all right they feel okay they're not cracked that one there I think is okay I'll have a look I don't think there's no, not a big problem with any of these pipes in here am I looking at the right place there we are sorry anyhow now and, and everything in here looks all right I've got it set at top dead well at the timing mark for setting up the chain the, uh, the timing belt one of these days I'll get a uh, cover for this uh, like a timing belt cover but I don't have one yet now this is all that's tight that's tight the third one's tight back there so that's sitting there this is hmm I forget what that is but that's he hooked up to the cold start valve somehow or other and stops or starts fuel from going back to the back to the uh, mm, tank on the return line and it hooks on like on here somewhere but this part here hooks on there too so there's like three three things held on here so I'll get that on and then I'll be able to put the tank back to get it together there and like this That's pretty noisy, so it likely needs a new one of them. That air pump there. Not that it's, you know, not that it really matters if it doesn't work. But I don't mind having those things working. I, I think they do make a bit of a difference. I don't know how much of a difference. But that sounded like it's had its better days. So I'll I'll check into see what. See if I can come up with an air pump for that thing. Not too tough to get into that once you take apart everything else, right? <laughs> okay, so I'll uh, carry on getting this stuff all put back together and see if we can make it look good. Alrighty. Yeah, there's this thing here. Three bolts bolt into the uh, into that, and that holds on this air thing. I put a new hose in here I don't know if I showed you that put an old hose across there even though that thing's not working someday it might work someday I might get a new one and and there used to be something the hole was on here there was a rubber mount around there but don't know what it did don't know what it did used to, it's a used to be so now I'll see if I can get the water bucket back on here I also like this there was a broken plastic on here see how that plastic holds it up here there's broken plastic on here so I just put a like a little brace on there to try and hold it more solidly and that because that supports the electric motor there, there and everything anyway that's the loo for now yeah there that's now all back all back together here that everything here is rubber mounted and these two here I'll have to get new ones for sometime but not not an emergency on it that's for sure and the uh, <laughs> the 
fan belt there is, or the, whatever you call that, the belt, that belt down there is also rubber mounted. That runs the water pump and everything. So I have to tighten that up a little bit more. See if I can get that to work for me. And same with the air conditioner pump belt. It's loose. Everything's loose. Okay. Anyhow, now I have to uh, get this thing here finished, put that back together. Yeah, you've likely seen me take this apart and put it back together before, but I'll just do it one more time. What the hell, eh? Hey? There you go, those are all on. They're not that tight. This needs to be tightened. You noticed when I was working on it, I loosened this one again because this hose here goes underneath it and this hose goes around it. That one there is tight. This one here, it seems that the hose shrunk. I don't know, maybe it's wrapped around something here. Yeah, it seems to be wrapped around a bunch of stuff. So, let's see if I can get that to, yeah. Now that, why would that hose be wrapped around everything? And that's got a kink in it there too. Wonder why. I don't know. Not leaking, so I guess it's all right for now. Anyway, now I'll, I'll get these things tightened up and uh, then this cover here goes on. Then I had to cut free the... Uh, I had put a tie wrap on this right here, but I had to cut it free because it was making this too, too, uh, not enough, not enough slack on that. So that's about where it is right now. Anyhow, there you go. I'll tighten that stuff up and I'll show you when I get it all on there. Here, I forgot to mention the, the rebuild kit doesn't come with new banjo bolts for our, for that or that, which Mm, I guess they expect that you don't take that apart. Anyhow, but I I have lots of banjo, like banjo washers, those copper washers. I have a lot of them from the last time, and they're all right here. I did check the other bags of stuff, and indeed the, the washers, copper washers in there aren't the right size. Anyway, 
That's. I'll carry on. Oh, there we are. Okay, now. All hooked up. That's back on. All the hoses are back in place. I think. Oh no, they aren't. There's one underneath, down there that I didn't put on. Oh, oh dear me. Hopefully I can reach it from below. I'll go. I'll put the car up and just see if I can. Hmm. Sometimes, sometimes. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. There you go. One hour later, and I did get the hose on there. Oh, that was a lot of work. And I guess whoever built these cars originally had to be pretty skinny. Because, well, I'm certainly not that skinny. So now, I think I'll hook up the electricity, see if anything blows up. And then we'll go from there, go from there and see what happens here. I think I've got... I think I'm ready to do it. No big noise. See if any electricity works. I'll just take a half inch wrench and tighten that up, then I'll check. Yeah, there, I tighten that up. Now, nothing's, uh, no pop go the weasel yet. I'll just see what, see what happens when I hop in here. Oh dear me. I fold myself into this thing. Now, is the clock running? Yeah, the clock's running, so that's a good sign. Must be electricity somewhere. Hazard lights are flashing. I'll just see what it looks like on the outside. Yeah, we got hazard lights in the back. I don't think we had them before, did we? One, two. Three, four. <laughs> That's a good sign. Must have hooked up something, right? I haven't turned on the key yet. So now I'll turn this off, right? Turn on the lights. Now, it shouldn't get headlights on because it's uh, tail lights, tail lights. No lights for the uh, license plate, but we got tail lights. That's a good sign. And then we got marker lights in the front, marker lights on the front. That one works. Hmm. That one doesn't. That one doesn't, but just be a bulb thing in there then. I'll, I'll be able to figure that out as long as I got electricity to it. Good. So I must have hit something right with the uh, electricity stuff. Now, I'll just go in here. I'll turn on the... There we go. That's... Oops, windshield washers work. <laughs> Flasher lights work. They all, the headlights came up, but they didn't turn on. So there's something there wonky, but I'll be able to figure that out. Oh, I don't know what's going on here now. Intermittent wipers work. Oh, let's see. Don't hear the fuel pump going. Oh yeah, there's the fuel pump going. And it starts. It doesn't run where it should, but it starts. I'll let it run for a minute or two.
Now the idle screw, I can turn that up a bit. So it's idling pretty low, right? Bit better. This thing's not leaking anyhow. I'll figure out why the headlights don't work here one of these days. They worked before. So, anyhow, that works. I'm going to put the electronic ignition in it, and then we're going to see if we can get it tuned up right. Yeah, so now I've moved it around to, like, the timing marks. There's a little dot right there and dot there. Dot there and dot there. The first dot on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that or not. Where am I? Right down in there. Down in there. There's two dots on the on the uh, pulley and one dot over here where the pointy thing that's the pointy thing under there so first dot is the right one second dot I missed okay so now I've got that that should be pointing at cylinder number one in there and I'll just take the cap off and make sure right in there is the distributor so half inch wrench well, first off, I remove this vacuum seems to hold pretty good. That was holding vacuum. That's good, so there's no serious vacuum leaks. Ugh, how come this one won't come off? Oh, there. Just pull it out that way. I'll leave the rubber on there. All right, now this has got a half inch nut down here. Uh oh, first off, make sure that the thing's pointing the right way. Oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, so that's pointing to number one there, right? Yeah, okay, here we go. This comes off, right? Then the points are there and the condenser is over here and the electricity goes through there. So, find my screwdriver, there it is. I don't think that I have to uh, disassemble the machine to get it to work, to get the new bits in. Don't remember though. That's a uh, old condenser, right? Then. Here's this bit. I think that I've done this before on the Volkswagen. Can't say I remember. There's this stuff here. I wonder what it's for. I know it's for something. I think I better clean my hands. Hang on. Yeah, here I am back again. Don't know what that's for. For something doesn't matter yeah there is a notch on here so that's number one cylinder should be pointing there cool anyway that's all 
in there okay and I'm pretty sure this works yeah that works okay and I'm pretty sure the mechanical works too yeah it works anyway here's all the bits right And here's the instructions. But you can go online and get better instructions. But basically that's how it is right there. So this goes in Right where the uh, points used to be. Oh, over here. In here, there's like on the back of the points, there's this bumpy thing here, and that's where the screw goes, right? But on this one here, you just, it's got the bumpy thing there. You just put that into its into the spot and then that screw hole there will be right where it's supposed to be and I guess you use the same old they don't send you a new screw which is fine Yeah, you know, I love doing things a few times. Anyway, I forgot about this paste here. This is thermal paste. And these things get fairly hot when they're running. And it helps to make a good connection here. So it says to clean off that, like, clean that plate off well. So in this case, this is, I'm using acetone here. And a Q-tip, as you maybe uh, maybe can tell, it says to clean it off spotless clean, right? Okay, we'll make it spotless clean. We can do that. Looking in the right place? Yeah, around there. So now, that's the negative for the battery. Get that down out of the way there. This thing here, wires, wires everywhere. I've got that gasket back on the, on the bottom of it here. And it drops into around here, right? That's where it should be right around there. Huh. That was easy. In the right spot and everything. So that should be pointing to a number one cylinder right there. Just like that. And this thing here goes back on. And the nut goes back on. 
where I had it running. Oh, well, I think I've got it. I've got it one cog out, so I'll have to do take it apart again, as usual. This wire here. I'll have to figure out where the wires go. Because on the hot shot, did I show you that? I'll show you there. That's back in there, right? I'll show you the wiring in a minute. It's a uh, hot spark. And I think you go to www.hotspark.com, hot spark.com. And then there's the wiring for it. So. The black wire from the hot module goes to the negative side, right? And the red wire from the hot module goes to the positive side. If you need to go through a ballast resistor, you put it there. Yeah, okay. So I'll just see if I can figure that out. That's the positive side over there, so this would be a negative side here, and that, that wire there makes sense. The yellow wire was. <laughs> now I don't even remember what I said. Black wire goes to negative, or? Black wire from hotspot goes to the negative. Okay. Black wire, which is, makes sense because that's be the, you know, the break, breaker wire. And the red wire goes to the other side over here positive did I show am I pointing the right way likely not there so red wire goes on there I put a new coil in it one of those like a three ohm coil and wires go like that and it should be right ish Okay, let me just set you up here again. Like that. So that'll be that. Now we'll see if it'll run. Hey, okay, again. Hang on a minute or two. Yeah, so there now. This, I've got all redone. Put in the electronic ignition. Put in a new coil. Now I'll give it another start and see what it see what happens this time. See if it runs with the new with electronic ignition in it. Never know. Oh, you never know what might happen. Well, it just about went. I think I have the timing set wrong there. So I'll have to work on that a bit. I'll just... Turn that around a little bit. I'll loosen it off and turn it one way or the other. I think that way. Not sure. Then I turned the distributor. I had two black marks on there. I didn't know which one's right. So I turned it to the other one. And we'll just see what happens this time. Well, I know it was running a minute ago, so that's all right. <laughs> Nothing happening there. So I'll turn it back that much the other way. Hang on a minute. Yeah, there, I turned it around quite a bit. And it's running now, it's not running very smoothly, but I'll uh, just loosen that to get it to go by 
they pierce. Alright, can you see that? There's the mark there that it used to be at now. It's quite a bit turned from there. So I'll just uh, sort it out a bit. Might have to lift it out and turn it another notch. Maybe I got it on the wrong notch. Yeah, there now it's uh, running okay. Not perfect, but it's running. And I put the timing light on it, and that seems to be, you know, pretty close to the spot. I'm not going to dip around with it too much until I figure out what really is the spot. So, and it's smoking like a bastard, hey? Eh? Yeah, well, it just smokes. So I think it's running. Like, I think it's running really rich. Not really sure, but I think it's running pretty rich, so likely you got too much fuel going to it or too little fuel going to it. I can't seem to get it like it won't rev. So I think I got it too too much fuel going to it. Anyhow, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, test the fuel pressure and get that thing sorted out right. Yeah, there's some smoke happening down here. I wonder what that's from. Oh, maybe it's from the exhaust pipe. I'm not sure. Gonna have to check that into that. And I'll just stick it up in the air and see if I can see what's going on there. Yeah, so now what I've done, got it running, right? And I did down below there that I tightened up the oh alternator belt and it seems that there's a little bit of a wisp of steam coming out of the water pump so I'll have to check into that as we go along likely the uh, likely yeah likely it's time for a new water pump anyway that's all being said and done so the uh, went along all right I got what I wanted to get done I've got that um, thing there all the fuel distributor back on in place I put the electronic ignition into there and I've got the coil on there and it ran so everything that way is right I think I now I'm gonna have to chase down fuel pressure problems but I'll leave it at that I'll leave it right here for this one today because I think it'll take a little more hours than you have in your uh, in your schedule for watching this stuff but good progress I'm, I'm happy with it so that's uh, all for this week and hopefully you enjoy it all and please remember to like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff and I'll see you on the next one. Yeah, yeah, so 15th of November and it's, it's raining. Well, what a surprise. Buster and I made it down to the beach here and uh, tide is fairly high. I think it's still got to come in some more. And the ocean is very, very calm today. Anyway, that's, uh, it looks like it's trying to snow, raining with a little bit of snow mixed in. Oh, well, that's what happens in November. There's the buster right there, hey? So, see you later.